Continuing my series about the Ugreen NAS and the different things you can do with it, in this video I look at setting up Image, an open source and free alternative to Google Photos. Image enables you to have your own free, private and searchable database of all the images and videos you take on your phone, or other devices. Image uses your own private storage instead of having to pay Google to host them in their cloud services. In this video, I'll also walk through the steps to enable remote access using Tailscale VPN. I won't be going into the setup of Tailscale on your Ugreen NAS, so I recommend watching my earlier video about Jellyfin remote access. Responding to requests for an image setup tutorial, I've created this guide. Image offers a self-hosted alternative to services like Google Photos, especially when storage limits are exceeded. Impressively, Image boasts an AI search engine comparable to Google's, a feature I personally utilise with my large collection of photos and videos. The appeal of a powerful free option is undeniable. While Image itself is free, costs are associated with the storage and setup time. This guide specifically focuses on configuring Image for Ugreen NAS users and enabling remote access. The very first step is to download and install Docker if you don't already have it installed on your Ugreen NAS. You can use UGOS either via a browser or the official UGOS app on your computer. As covered in my previous video, Docker is a program that enables you to manage different applications on your Ugreen NAS. Docker can be thought of as an application platform with its own marketplace of installable programs, known as containers. These containers are self-contained units designed to execute specific tasks. A container is established using a blueprint known as an image. This process is essential for creating the image server container, which facilitates connecting the image web interface on your computer and your app to your NAS. The very first step is you have to create an image container and also the folders where you'll be storing your image and video files on your NAS. The next steps will not only enable you to upload your pictures and videos to your NAS using the image web interface, but also upload files directly from your phone storage. Navigate to the Docker folder on the NAS using UGOS, either on the web or using the official app. Check out my video on setting up my DXP2800 for more information on UGOS. Create a folder called Image. Within the folder, create another folder for your photos and videos called Album. Next, create a folder called Postgres. This folder will be where Image stores the necessary database files for all the metadata information. Unlike other popular containers like Plex and Jellyfin, you won't find images for Image on the Docker libraries. Instead, you'll have to compose the container using a handy file supplied by the team who make Image. You'll also need a second file to edit settings to reflect your specific setup. This is the environmental file. This second file will reside in the Image folder and tell the Image container important information about your NAS storage and also passwords that you want to use. To download the template for the compose file, you can use the link in the description or visit Image's own webpage, which explains the process in even greater detail. For the environmental file, copy and paste the text from the Image website. Open a new file using Notepad or another text editor and paste the information. Next, you'll be editing the environmental file with the folder directory information that you created earlier. Replace the text after the equal sign for the upload location with a directory for the album. You'll also replace the text for the database location after the equal sign to designate where Image tracks assets stored in the file system outside of Image. The next step is to replace the time zone data with your own location using the link concluded and scrolling down to your location and copying and pasting that into the env text file. Finally, the default password for your database used by Image is Postgres, 
but the recommendation is to change this to a secure password of your choice. However, in Docker it's best to avoid special characters in the password value to avoid issues for advanced reasons. If you'd like more information on what the Postgres SQL database is, check out the FAQ on the official image website. Save the file and upload it to the image folder and then rename it with a new file format called .env. Quick warning, make sure you upload the file first and then rename it as there's a bug which doesn't convert the file correctly, stopping the container from working properly if you try to rename it on your computer first. Next, we'll create the image container on your NAS. Open Docker and then click Project, and then Create. Give the container a name, image in lowercase is fine. Next, you'll be uploading the YAML file, which will create the image container using the file downloaded earlier. Click Import, and then choose the file from the saved location on your computer. Once uploaded, click Deploy. The next step is to set up your image account so you can use the web interface and app. First navigate to your new image container and click on the icon to reveal the IP address and port number of your container. Make a note of this information for when you set up your mobile app and then click the address to launch the web interface. You'll be prompted to create an admin account and password. The next screen will ask you to log into your image account with your new credentials. Next, you'll set the theme preferences and be asked about your preferred privacy settings. The next screen is the storage template advanced settings. Image allows the admin user to set the uploaded file name pattern at the directory and file name level and the storage label for a user. If you want to change the storage template during the initial setup, first enable the feature, then customize your storage template. For most users, you might want to leave this as default. Now you're set up to use Image. Next, you can set up your mobile app after downloading from your relevant app store. You'll first be required to enter the IP address of your image container, which can be found on the image container interface, or taken from the URL bar when using the web interface. You'll then log in using your credentials. To upload your photos from your phone, navigate to the backup screen by clicking the cloud icon in the top right hand corner. You can then select which albums you want to back up to your image server from the backup screen. Scroll down and press start backup to start the backup process. This will upload all the assets to selected albums. The app will only work when you're connected to your home network without an additional step in the next chapter to get remote access. Like Jellyfin, Image is a free open source service requiring self-configuration for remote access. To access Image outside of your home network, you must set up the remote access yourself. There is no centralized infrastructure provided for internet access to your Image account. The simplest method is to use Tailscale VPN, unless you have the necessary expertise to create your own hosting solution. For a detailed description of Tailscale, check out my previous video about how to set up Jellyfin remote access using Tailscale. That video gives you the entry-level walkthrough on understanding and setting up Tailscale on your NAS. Just like Jellyfin, you'll need to use your unique Tailscale IP and port number for the image container to access image when you're away from your home. The NAS IP address can be found on your Tailscale machine list. The port number can be found in the web URL interface and by default is 2283. Now, when you want to access Image remotely, you must remember to turn on your Tailscale app on your phone to connect to your NAS at home. Thank you for watching and as always it would be great if you were to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more content on personal technology and the connected home.